What is up, Diecast Race fans, and welcome back to sunny California and Bay City for stage two of three in route to finding our first top three turvy. My name is Daryl, and I'll be your host. Last week, we watched Giorgio from G Force Racing and Dutch Vandership from Dutch Clutch Racing both secure their spots in next week's four car, eight lap stage three final. And today, we'll find out who will join them. Remember, we'll take the four group winners, run them eight laps, and the lowest point total is eliminated to give us our first top three turn. And now, let's head on over to the performance shop to meet our next four drivers. First up on the inside road, driving the 2012 Camaro for Arlo Racing, it's Arlo. Outside front row, driving the Lamborghini Huracan for Midwest Diecast Racing, it's Sean Owens. From Variant Skunk Works, starting inside back row in the Karma GS6, it's Variant. And finally, Outside back row in the 1984 Mustang, driving for Puffs Racing, this is Puff. Nestled amongst the beautiful trees of Bay City, Arlo on the pole next to Sean Owens, Varian and Puff in the rear. And stage two is underway. Into the Napa Valley, Arlo creeping his way to a bigger lead and on to the Golden State Bridge. Sean Owens and Variant battling it to the top of the hill. And Variant takes advantage of gravity and comes out in front. Arlo all alone and he goes around. Through the downtown area, across the big speed, Arlo still in reverse wheel. Hold on to take lap one. And oh boy, here comes Puff using Sean Owens as a plow. Owens will take third, Puff grabs a point. Arlo across with a lap time of 8.76, and well, Arlo came to play, but let's see how he handles traffic. Let's check out our top three turvy replay. Sean Owens kept up well with Variant, but the inside lane got him at the merge from Coit Hill. Both castings, though, super fast. A gate to checker win for Arlo, and we should all feel thankful he's only got one turn on the pole position. Let's hope Arlo wasn't showboating it because there's a lot of racing left. Back up top lap two, we'll rotate him one spot clockwise, putting Sean Owens on the pole next to Buck. Arlo and Barrett in the rear. In drops, there they go. Through the vineyard toward the bridge, and Sean Owens with an early lead. Arlo on the outside lane with him, head up the hill. And it looks like Puff might be holding Barrett up a bit. Down the hill to the Bay City Bridge, Owens maintaining the lead, but Arlo breathing down his neck. Around the palace, they touch. Arlo on the outside, into the lead. Owens is stunned. He goes over. Arlo around for the lap two victory. Buried around. Puff gets by the wreckage. Arlo across with a quite ironic lap time of 9.11. Looking like that's exactly what Sean Owens needs right about now. Owens in that Lamborghini Huracan with a sweet paint job. To the surprise of many, jumps out here to a quick lead and actually held off the charging Arlo most of the lap. But if you're anything like me, you knew some action was coming. Check out the rear cars here as Variant gets by Puff who'd gotten a little loose and I couldn't tell you what he's doing right here. But Arlo looking for the right time to strike and he finds it. Here we go, foundation lap three. The lap that can make or break your chances in lap four. Puff stumbles his way to the pole. Variant slides up next to him. Sean Owens and Arlo in the rear. There's the green. Around the dual 90, Puff on that inside lane, but Variant into the lead and the first to the bridge, and Puff hits something. He's on the rail. Variant up the hill, Arlo gives chase, and Puff's back on the track again. Sean Owens will make it over the hill. Buried across the Bay City Bridge and past the Painted Ladies. Arlo, a full custom, full heads turn behind him. Puff is coming around the mountain. Owens is taking pictures? Come on, man. 
Bearing it across the Bigsby Bridge and he will hold off a charging Arlo for a lap to win. Puff, maintaining, comes across for third. And Sean Owens decides to join us. Great across with a track time of 8.87 and will pick up a point on Arlo's lead going into lap four. Well, we still don't know what happened to Puff here. The track officials, air quote, took a look at everything. But we're glad he's able to get back on track there, pun intended. But Ferriot Skunk Works was in control of this race from start to finish. Odd to see Arlo in such a catch-up position and not really be able to make up much ground. But then again, this is the top three turvy and we have no idea what's going on around here. Here we go, final lap four. Ferriot Skunk Works on the pole and he's gonna have to beat Arlo by two positions here to tie and stranger things have happened. There we go. One last time through the vineyard, ferried out front, but here comes Arlo onto the Golden State Bridge and up Coit Hill. Ferriot gaining no ground on that inside lane. Across the bridge and headed downtown. Arlo's loose, but he gets it together. All four cars around the palace, around the performance shop, Ferriot on the bumper of Arlo and they touch. But Arlo will hold on to capture the win with a time of 9.24, making him our third finalist for the top three turvy. Variant with a gallon effort comes up just short. Sean Owens across for third. And Puff, I bet your next car is better. Let's check out the replay while we await our final scores. Great showing by all these drivers today. We kind of expected Arlo to be fast and Variant as well. But surprise of the day goes to Sean Owens from Midwest Diecast Racing. First time at Bay City, sends a Lambo. The cards were stacked against him, but you impress, my friend. Well done. And Puff, great looking build, dude. I know you make them fast, so we'll look forward to your next entry. All right, let's check out our scoreboard and, well, dang. With almost a perfect score, Arlo's 15 points will definitely make him one of the favorites to remain in the top three next week. But again, all great builds, and you may have just ran into a buzzsaw. Since we have a lot to get through today, we'll take another quick second to thank our track sponsors, Rust Belt Customs and Spoolheads. All right, let's get to it and meet our final four drivers vying for that last spot in next week's eight lap event. On the pole and driving the Jaguar XJ220 for the A-Team. 905, give her the suit back. This is Indy Rain. Outside front row, driving for 409 Diecast Racing in the 2012 Camaro, it's Laro. Inside back row, in the gold Porsche Panamera, driving for Dog Squab Racing, it's j -Bo. And finally, driving for Manchild Motorsports, in the Jaguar I-Pace, it's Matt McDriver. Back up top, beautiful Bay City Speedway. One of these four drivers could be a member of your next top three turby. Indy Rain on the pole next to Laro, j and Matt McDriver in the rear. And here we go. Around the bank 90, Indy Rain sticks her nose out front of him, but they're even at the bridge. Laro first to the crossover, and he's on the rail. Indy Rain on the inside and into the lead. On the Bay City Bridge, and the driver's loose. Rain and Laro pass the ladies and around the palace. Rain rattles around and here comes Laro. But Indy Rain will maintain control and take lap one with a lap time of with a lap time of 8.45. Laro across for second. Matt McDriver slides across for third, and j -Bo will round us out. Laro showing he definitely has the speed here to win, but maybe too much as he blue lines his way up to Koi Tower here, allowing Indy Rain to catch right back up and make that pass. McDriver with a little less effort in front of Jabo, but Laro doing his best to make up for lost time, gets a front row seat to whatever this little stunt was by Indy Rain, but she dialed that XJ220 right back in and held on for the lap one win. Back up top lap two, Laro slides to the pole and welcomes Matt McDriver to the front. Indy Rain now in the back, next to J-Bo. There's the green. Down in the wine country, they're packed tight onto the bridge. Laro edges out a bit into the crossover and they're all flying up the turn and down the hill. Towards the 
they even around the palace. Laro cannot shake Rain. Laro goes over. Rain somehow around him and into the lead. And any Rain is gonna win this race, folks. The driver bulldozes his way through Laro for second. Jabo on the coattails takes third. And what a horrible break for Laro, who had this lap in the palm of his hand and just couldn't close the deal. Laro showed promise last race that he was fast enough to be in this thing, and this lap he laid those skeptics to rest as he led Gate to Bixby. Unfortunately, we need Gate to check her line. You can always tell if a car is dialed into a track when it barely touches the sidewalls, and I don't think Laro did much of that at all until he rolled over like a dog looking for belly rubs. We got him back at the gate, and Matt McDriver takes his turn on the pole. J-Bo joins him up front, Laro and Indy Rain in the rear, and lap three is underway. McDriver first around the 90 and through the vineyards, but he's using Laro as a license plate frame down the bridge and towards Coy Tower. J-Bo and Rain struggling to keep up. McDriver, eyes blue through his rear view, sees nothing but blue as they're both flying past the ladies and headed downtown. Laro will run out of room and Matt McDriver takes lap three. J-Bo fends off Indy Rain the entire lap to capture third. McDriver across with a time of 8.62 and that propels McDriver into a tie with Rain heading into the last lap. McDriver out early in front of J-Bo with or without a little Laro love. Once they reach the top of the hill, it's all McDriver. But the drivers were never out of reach. Into downtown and around the performance shop, Laro actually gains a lot of ground, but it was McDriver's race. Here we go, folks. Final lap four. And J-Bo, trailing by four here, hopes to take advantage of the pole position with Indy Rain beside him and Matt McDriver behind him next to Laro. And there they go. Jabo on the inside works his way out front a bit, but they're all square at the over-under, and it's Indy Rain into the lead on the bridge. Laro into second, but Jabo's on the move and into the lead at the merge. Across the base of the bridge, towards the painted ladies, and Rain gets loose. She's backwards. Laro on the railing. There's a battle for third. Indy Rain goes over. Jabo's across the line. Laro breaks free, and McDriver gets caught up behind Indy Rain, and what the hell just happened? Where's the Tylenol? Jabo across with a time of 9.05. Laro just happy to be across, and I cannot wait to see these final scores. But first, let's try to make some sense of all this. Watch Jabo climb Coy Hill like a champ and pass both of them on the inside lane. The back three moving in unison toward the painted ladies when Rain climbs the wall and flips around backwards. Laro on the side rail, and we'll see a shot of what happens to Rain. And now we'll focus on the back two. All right, let's check out our scores, and you guys won't believe this. I've never seen this in all my diecast days. We have a four-way tie for the lead, folks. I know, right? Obviously, there was no set rule for this scenario, so here's what we're gonna do. Indy Rain with two lap wins will take on Laro with zero. Best two out of three, fastest lap determines the inside lane advantage for a lap three. Then, J-Bo and McDriver will do the same and will race off the winners. Let's get going, shall we? Indy Rain on the inside, Laro on the outside, and here we go. Rain will stick her nose out front first, but Laro on the outside will lead him over to the bridge. Up Coy Hill, Rain will not pick up much ground on the inside, and they head to the Bay City Bridge. Laro's loose, there's contact. He's backwards in front of the ladies and into downtown. They're both wobbly, they're staring at each other. And Laro in reverse takes lap one and the advantage with a time of 9.03. We'll swap lanes. Indy Rain needs a win here to stay alive, and there they go. Laro, not wasting any time, grabs the lead into the vineyards. Indy Rain looking to make up ground, but Laro extending, and he's loose. But he keeps control and the lead. Around the palace into downtown and Rain is making a move. But comes up short and Laro with another lap time of 9.11 will live to race again as he'll meet the winner of our next matchup featuring J-Bo on the inside from Dog Squab and Matt McDriver from Manchild Motorsports on the outside and we are underway folks. 
there even through the vineyard, but McDriver will sneak out front onto the Golden State Bridge and up the Koi Tower. Jabo keeping pace and McDriver giving him every opportunity to. Down past the ladies and around the palace. Does Jabo have a late run in him? Not this time, and McDriver will take the race one advantage with a time of 9.36. They'll switch sides. J-Bo needing to win here to stay alive with the card stacked against him in the outside lane. And we're underway. McDriver looking like a man on a mission here. Jumps out early and leads us to the bridge. And up Coit Hill. This one might be a Sunday drive in the park for McDriver as he's off to a huge lead. Around the palace and into downtown. McDriver tries to give it away, but he'll come across from the time of 9.71. And our final matchup is set. Thanks a bunch to Jabo. We'll see you again soon with your next casting. Here we go, folks. Lauro on the inside, McDriver on the outside. Winner to the stage three finals, and here we go. Lauro sneaks out front with the inside lane advantage, but McDriver keeps pace. Up the hill and around and back down. Laurel extending the lead. He's loose in front of the ladies. And here comes McDriver. Big touch. Down to the yeses. And McDriver just drove off the Big Speed Bridge. And race one belongs to Laurel with a lap time of 9.17. Surprisingly not 9.11. Let's hope McDriver is okay. And I'm sorry, but that's funny right there. We got McDriver out of the bay and into the pole position. Laurel looking to end it now, and here we go. Out of the dual 90, McDriver leads us through the vineyards and down the Golden State Bridge. Laurel on the outside, and they're even at the top. There's contact, and McDriver wins the battle with the merge. Down the Bay City Bridge towards the ladies. More contact around the palace. Into the downtown area, and McDriver goes over again. Lauro bullies his way around McDriver, and just like that, folks, Lauro will advance to the Stage 3 Finals and will have his shot at becoming one of the original Top 3 Turvy. Thanks a bunch to Matt McDriver. Great showing, dude. We'll see Manchild with their next entry. All right, folks, well, that was a long one, but worth it. Let's take a look at our four finalists, and three of them will be our first Top 3 Turvy. Lauro with 409 Diecast Racing. Arlo with Arlo Racing, Giorgio with G-Force Diecast Racing, and Dutch Vandershift with Dutch Clutch Racing. Thanks again to Rust Belt Customs, and make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is Bay City Diecast Racing. My name is Daryl, and I've been your host. Have a good night, everybody.